Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. The topic of this video is Leviathan, the biblical sea monster. A monster so infamous that his very name became a byword for all giant creatures and mythical terrors who lurk in the dark depths beneath the waves. Depending on the source, it is either a large sea animal, a sea monster, an archdemon, another name for Satan, or a wellspring of power that can be tapped into by those with arcane knowledge or unorthodox religious beliefs. We are going to begin with the book of Job, which is where most of the biblical information about Leviathan comes from. Next, we'll take a look at how he factors into demonology, modern Satanism, and the occult. Alright, let's get into it. Most of the biblical information about Leviathan comes from the book of Job, from chapter 41. In it, he's described as a giant sea monster, invincible scales armoring his body, fire erupting from his mouth, and smoke billowing from his nostrils. Mortal weapons are useless against him, and such is his strength that to him steel is like straw and brass like rotten wood. To see him is to have the frozen fist of fear grasp one's heart, and not even the bravest can stand before him. Here's the passage that elaborates further. His teeth are terrible, his scales are his pride, shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another, they stick together, they cannot be sundered. By his sneezing a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. His heart is as firm as stone, yea, as hard as a piece of nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the habergeon. What is known about Leviathan is largely revealed through the suffering of Job, a once prosperous man, a man who had the world by the tail, so to speak. Through this we also learn about Satan's original role, which was, as sanctioned by God, to test humanity, subjecting people to hardship to see if they were truly faithful and not just superficially faithful because life was going their way. For true faith remains steadfast in the dark, not merely maintained when in the light. One day, while court was being held in heaven, Satan, a truncated version of Ha Satan, meaning the adversary, challenged God, proposing a sort of bet, asserting that Job was only faithful because of his prosperity, and that he would curse God once his life was destroyed. God accepted, and Satan promptly descended, proceeding to wreak havoc. After Job loses everything, enduring a veritable gauntlet of predation and misfortune, he finally reaches his breaking point, not renouncing God, but demanding that God come and explain himself in person. God answers, speaking from the storm, a voice emanating from the clouds. Through didactic discourse, God posing a lengthy series of rhetorical questions, Job's ignorance and insignificance is revealed. It isn't that his life and well-being aren't important, or that he is saturated with shortcomings, not laden with unworthiness compared to other men. It's that when juxtaposed to God, who was there before the beginning, and who created everything, and juxtaposed to the sheer scope and complexity of creation, Job's existence is but a mote of dust, his knowledge and capacity to understand infinitesimal. Job's indignation about the miserable state his life had degenerated to is tantamount to an ant's outrage about the tunnels and chambers of his home being flooded by a heavy rain. The world is big and complicated, and not everything that happens is easy or happy. Tragedy strikes and hardship befalls. When God questions Job, the intention is to challenge Job's perspective, encourage humility, and ultimately lead him to a deeper recognition of God's wisdom and sovereignty. God's questions prompt Job to reflect on his own limitations and on the vastness of the cosmic and the divine. God describes Leviathan as part of his response to Job's indignation. 
he uses the description of Leviathan to remind Job of the unfathomability of creation, the sheer size and complexity of it, to impart perspective, helping Job to understand his own place in the universe. Leviathan is described as a massive sea creature with incredible power, and God uses this description to emphasize his own sovereignty over all of creation. By showing Job the immense size and power of Leviathan, God reminds him that there are things in the universe that he cannot control or understand, and that his place in the world is ultimately subject to God's will, to the whims of the world, be they good or bad. God's description of Leviathan is also meant to inspire awe and wonder in Job. With it, God helps Job to gain a deeper appreciation for the complexity and beauty of the world around him. In this way, the description of Leviathan contributes to the broadening of Job's perspective and helps him to see his own suffering through a sobering lens, his experience relative to the churn of the cosmos, contextualized by the big picture. Now changing our focus from the book of Job to demonology, Leviathan is often associated with Satan and the forces of evil. He is sometimes considered one of the seven princes of hell, each of the seven representing one of the seven deadly sins. In this context, Leviathan is linked to the sin of envy. This interpretation is based on the idea that Leviathan, like Satan, is a powerful and rebellious entity that seeks to overthrow the divine order and sow chaos and destruction. Some Christian scholars have also identified Leviathan with the apocalyptic beast of Revelation, a monstrous figure that will rise from the sea to wage war against God and his followers during the apocalypse. In Dea Culta Philosophia, Leviathan and Behemoth fill the scale of binary as the two chiefs of the devil. In Michaelis's classification of demons, Leviathan is said, before his fall from heaven, to have numbered among the seraphim, the foremost order of angels, the angels closest to God's throne and that he tempts people into heresy and is the particular enemy of St. Peter. And in the book of Abramelin, Leviathan, along with Lucifer, Satan, and Belial, is listed as one of the four chief demonic princes of hell. As well, Leviathan features prominently in the Satanic Bible, which was written in 1969 by Anton LaVey, the founder of the Satanic Church. In the Satanic Bible, Leviathan is not described in a biblical context, but is instead used symbolically with the philosophy of Levian Satanism. In it, Leviathan is one of the four crown princes of hell and represents the element of water. The other three princes are Satan, fire, Lucifer, air, and Belial, earth. Levian Satanism associates Leviathan with the West and with the depths of the subconscious. The use of Leviathan along with the other princes of hell, is part of LaVey's symbolic appropriation of infernal and religious imagery to construct a distinct atheistic philosophy that rejects traditional religious morality and espouses individualism, pleasure and fulfillment, and skepticism. LaVey and Satanism uses such symbols to represent aspects of human nature and the physical world, rather than as deities to be worshipped. In the broader realm of the occult, Leviathan is sometimes viewed as a symbol of primal wisdom and hidden knowledge that can be accessed by those who brave the mysterious and perilous realm of the supernatural. Many practitioners of the occult consider Leviathan to be a powerful and ancient entity that can be invoked or summoned for various purposes, to gain knowledge, power, or control over the chaotic forces of nature. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.